Hi, welcome to the podcast, P is for Plog. This is the second episode and it's P is for Plogger. Today we're going to be talking about plogging or as the Swedes call it, plogger. But of course we need a bit of a theme tune just to kick off. So let's just have a little snippet of what we heard last week. Let's get going. I'll keep it short like that. I should make a bit more of a graceful exit on that clip, but I think that's good enough for now. So what is this podcast all about? Well, it's just a simple podcast, just me speaking weekly around the same time each week. I just want to get used to talking into a microphone. I want to get used to getting a setup done. So for those that are actually seeing the video at the moment, you might notice it looks a bit different. I'm trying to get the, the lighting sorted out to make it a little bit more professional. Let me know what you think, if you like it. And in fact, it'd be good to have a rating as well. So give this a rating. Be honest. If you think it's a good rating, then give it the five stars. If not, then give it whatever you think. Give it a thumbs up, etc. depending on which platform you're looking at. As I say, I want to just get used to doing a podcast. So what I'm going to be doing is each week I'm going to be talking about a different subject. I'm also going to be just reviewing my week and then just talking about how it went, the amount of trash I picked up because I have an accountability that I want to talk about. But this week we want to talk about plugging itself because I can't really have a podcast about plugging and not really explain what it is. I'm sure many of you will actually know plogging is but for those that don't welcome you've entered the world of plogging and you're in the right episode let's talk about it well plogging as a word has existed since 2016 the swedes invented it but let's talk about how i first started so let's go back five years earlier in 2011 so that's when i did my first official what i'm calling plog even though it wasn't a word yet but i'm calling it a plog so in 2011, I was running from my parents to the train station to get to work. It was a five kilometer run. I used to do that every now and then. Fantastic, beautiful run around these English country lanes. So I grew up in this beautiful village, as I said last week, where Winnie the Pooh was written. And, and it is this idyllic English countryside, you know, just sort of windy roads with no footpaths, you're just sort of going through all this lovely English countryside. It was just so wonderful to do this. Now, the reason why there's no footpaths is because no one's walking there. And that was noticeable when I looked in the hedgerow. I was running and looked to the right, looked down in the hedge and uh, I just saw all this trash. I just saw you would expect to see in terms of trash. I saw fast food packaging. I saw cans. I saw bottles, cigarette packets, everything that gets thrown out of a car because that's where it came from, all of those items. And they were just accumulating in the hedgerow. There's no footpath. People aren't walking there. The council isn't going along there to clean up into the hedgerow itself. And that's when I asked the question, if I don't pick it up, who will? So I did. I bent down, picked up a few pieces of trash, and then I ran with it to the train station. And before I put it in the bin, I made a tweet. And so that's why I know on the 29th of September 2011, that was my first plug. After that, I had set myself a bit of a, bit of a goal, a bit of a sort of mission. Every time I'd be running to a train or from a train as part of my what I called the run commute then I would pick up at least a bit of trash just a handful that's all it needed and I'd just put it in the bin if I found a bag then I'd fill it up and I'd put it in the bin I didn't you know now there's a hashtag called find it fill it if you find a bag then fill it up with trash and then put it in the bin I didn't know that you know this is before all of that existed so but that's just what I kind of did and that really is the essence. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Other people did. I'm not the first person to pick up trash. 
I'm not the person who invented plug up. We'll talk about Eric and Karina in a second. But I was doing it and I didn't know other people did it. And that is the beauty of the word plogging. So in 2016, it got invented, the word, or rather the Swedish version did, plogger. So that's why this episode is called Peers for Plogger, the original Swedish word for picking up trash while running. And it's a combination of two words. It's plucka up, pick up, and jogger. So to combine, it's plogger. But then that got evolved into English and plogging. And in Dutch, for the Dutch uh, listeners, plogun. But what is the beauty of that word is it gave us a word to unite us. It gave us a word to describe the action of what we're doing. It gave us a way to connect. Suddenly we had a word we could unite by. Going back to that 2011, I didn't have hashtag plogging. I didn't know it existed. So what did I use instead? Well, I was in England at the time, so I grew up with the hashtag, or grew up with the phrase, keep Britain tidy. So I did hashtag keep Britain tidy. And then something along the lines of, look what I picked up on the run to the train. And then each time I would do it, I would probably use a different hashtag. Plogging gave us a hashtag for us all to use. Instead of hashtag, I went for a run, I picked up some trash and I put it in the bin and I carried on running. I took a photo of it and I put it on social media. I can just use simply hashtag plogging. In 2016, they invented the word and it was used to describe the act of running and picking up trash. But it has become so much more than that. It is basically now a word to describe picking up trash while you're outside. So if you're walking and you pick up some trash and put it in the bin, to me, you're plogging. If you're walking the dog, if you're just going off to catch the bus and you pick up some trash, you are plogging. You're doing an activity, you're being active outside and you're picking up trash. Now, there are other words that have been invented since that kind of along the same lines. And I think those are fantastic. So, for instance, if you're walking, people might use the, the term uh, polking. If you're in Dutch, you say vondela for walking, so it's plondela. Maybe plykling for cycling and picking up trash. Yes, you can do that. I'll be talking about that in a different episode. But if you do use those words, I think they're fantastic, but make sure you also use the hashtag plogging because that's the one that people look up. That's the one that media will look up. So every time you use that word, it increases the impact and increases the size of the movement. So always make sure you use the word, the hashtag plogging, whenever you go and do it on social media. And it's important because, and you can hear this phrase in the podcast loads of time. It's one of my favorite phrases that I sort of use for myself, which is when you pick up a piece of trash, you make an impact. But when people see you doing it, you can make a difference. Using that hashtag plugging gets you seen. It joins a movement. Even if no one sees that post, it adds to the count. Suddenly media will go, oh, we're talking about plugging in today's news article. And they'll go, oh yeah, plugging, there's on Instagram, there's 300,000 times it's been used. So every time you use that, it makes an impact in terms of the size of the hashtag. So even if it doesn't get seen, it has an impact. Just remember that. And when you talk about plogging, so it's picking up trash while running, but I've already said you can do it when you're walking. You can do it when you're walking your dog. You can do it when you catch the bus. There are no rules to plogging. I have rules that I like to use just to keep myself sort of in check to do it how I like to do it. But those aren't your rules. They aren't someone else's rules. They're the, they're the way, it's basically the way I like to pick up trash. And it could be completely different to how you do it. So for instance, now, 
Whereas when I first started, I was doing it every now and then. Now what I do is I pick up trash on every time I upload a Strava. That's something I've set for myself. That's not a rule of plogging. It's just something I've decided for myself to do. So that's how I do it. I do it every time I do an activity on Strava. But it could be that you've got a different type of impact that you want to make, or you've got a different type of passion within this area. It could be, for instance, that your passion is, or the thing that really you want to make an impact on is the amount of cigarette packets you see, cigarette butts that you see on the ground. So maybe you say to yourself, I'm only going to pick up cigarette butts. I'm only going to pick up cigarette packets. It's what you choose to how you do it. There are no rules. Do it the way you want to. Do it the way that feeds your passion. Because when you do, it means that you carry on doing it. It means that you're more likely to continue. Another phrase that I like to use is picking up a thousand pieces of trash is fantastic. That's amazing. But I'd rather have a thousand people picking up one piece of trash. That's more important. So the fact that you do it is fantastic. But doing it frequently, even if it's just a very small piece, just one piece, that's even better because there's a bigger chance that you get seen. If you do it every week, then you're going to be it's more likely that someone will see you doing it rather than if you just do it once. There's just one opportunity that someone will see you. And there's fantastic getting well, the interactions that you will have. Someone contacted me on Instagram after one of my stories. I'll tell you about the story in a second. But, but they said, yeah, they, they were, were picking up some trash. They were sort of inspired by me. Um, and they, they were picking up some trash after their run. And someone thanked them for what they were doing. I said, it makes you feel good, huh? And they were like, yeah, it was amazing. We had a really good conversation. And that's the beauty. That's being seen. That's making, that's really where the impact happens. But it's not to say, look at me, I'm cool. Yes, what you're doing is cool. But it doesn't mean you're cool. Look at me. I'm a bald guy, 57 years old with a, with a wobbly belly. I'm not cool. What I'm doing is and more importantly it's easy it's so easy just to bend down a piece and pick up a piece of trash and put it in the bin it's as simple as that so going back to ways that you can do it i'll talk more and more about different ways you can sort of pick up trash but just to give you a bit more food for thought so I've talked about maybe it's different types of trash that you want to pick up. You just want to pick up plastic or you just want to you know, just focus on what gives you passion. That's what's going to drive that you think is important. It could be that you go, I'll pick up one piece and I'll always put it in the recycling. I don't put it in the recycling as much as others. The reason being is simple. I might be running 30 kilometers. So today, for instance, I've just come back from a 22 kilometer run. I'm not going to carry that trash around for 22 kilometres before I get home to put it in the recycling. So what I do is I fill up a bag and I put it in the bin and then I carry on and do the same thing. But I don't have to do the same rule each time I don't, because there are no rules. I can sort of do something different. So what I do is occasionally I go, right, today I'm just going to pick up aluminium cans or I'm going to pick up plastic. And then I know I can put it straight into a recycling bin when I see it. And that's a lot easier. Do it how you want to. Going back to the being seen, a good tip could be don't put it straight away in the bin. Instead, if you've got a bag of trash in your hand, take it to the next bin or take it to the bin after. That gives you more of a chance to be seen. And that means there's a more of a chance to make a bigger impact. And that's why I run around in the banana suit. So if you see me on Instagram, if you see me on YouTube, etc., then you'll know I quite often run around in a weird outfit or I do something stupid. It's to be seen. 
and the impact that it makes is crazy. I'll give you a few examples that have sort of come out of it. So just by wearing that banana suit, what I always say is I like to, what I like to do on my group blogs is I like to wear a banana suit and I like to play disco music. People hear the disco music, disco music's fun, happy music. And suddenly, yeah, they hear that music. They know it. They know the songs. It gives them a smile on their face before they've even realized what's going on. They turn around and they suddenly see a banana, a great big giant banana playing the disco music and they start smiling. They start laughing rather. It's gone from a smile to a laugh. They're engaged and then they see the trash. Oh, hang on, he's picking up trash. Now, it could stop there. Sometimes it gets the best reactions ever. But I like to think that what might happen is they would go home, they're having dinner with the family and they go, I just saw this idiot in a banana suit playing disco music and someone, and then I've got this, this dream that one of them says, oh yeah, he picks up trash, doesn't he? Being seen is not to say how cool you are, it's to say how cool what you're doing is and how simple it is. And let's work together and make an impact together and make the world better. Because when you pick up a piece of trash, it says you care. How many problems in the world be solved if we all cared? It's as simple as that. Picking up a piece of trash is so, it's so much like the tip of an iceberg and the impact that it has on you and the people around you. And talking about that in the banana suit, is a few interactions I've had this week, which just amazed me. I, I don't know how they do it, but they reckon, kids recognize me now, even when I don't have the banana suit on. I think it must be the goatee or something along those lines. But for whatever reason, they, they know that I'm the banana guy. And so I was just walking to the supermarket and these kids went, banana man, banana man, banana man. They ran after me. And they went, have you got any cans? Because we're, we're hunting for cans at the moment for the, for the deposit on them. And I was just going to the supermarket. And I was taking my own cans back. So I said, yeah, I've got, I've got one. So I just sort of gave them one of my cans out of the bag. And they were so excited. They got a can from the banana man. So they were really thrilled by that. It was like a, this awesome interaction just for me wearing a banana suit and picking up trash. And then a, a few meters later, there was another group of kids and one of them gave me a high five. And I just... It made my day, it just made it so wonderful just from that interaction. And they seemed to enjoy it as well. But the coolest was later on. So I'm not in a banana suit. I'm just in running gear, but I've got a bag of trash and I've got a grabber in my hand. I'm at the traffic lights waiting for it to go green. And then on the other side of the road, there's... Uh, about three, I think, three kids on fat bikes, school kids around 14, 15, I'm guessing, just going past on the other side. And they started waving at me. They started waving at me with smiles on their faces. I, me, 57 years old, bald, wobbly belly. I'm not cool. And they were waving and smiling at me. Wow. If you... I, I mean, those kids at that age, when they're so... They, they have to look cool. You just know, right, they're not going to do something if it's uncool. This has become what I... What that banana suit has done has made it, been, it's made it acceptable for them to wave at a guy on the other side of the street with a bag of trash in his hands. Think about that. That is the impact. That is the hope that plogging gives me. I cannot believe how much joy that, that just brought me. It was amazing. So something else that happened on the same day, 
same sort of thing was there was another boy, probably around 14, 15 years old, and he came up and said, I saw you on TikTok. Thank you for what you do. He really went out of his comfort zone to come up to me to say that because his face was bright red. I'm, I, I'm just amazed at the power of that banana. So I know I'm going on about it, but it's just amazing. Find something that gets you seen because the rewards, it almost feels selfish. It almost feels l like you're, you're doing this not to pick up trash and to make an impact, but you're doing this to, to have these wonderful interactions because they really are so positive and so rewarding. It, it, I feel guilty about them. It's just, it's crazy. But that is the power of being seen. The talking about the word plugging as well. Another thing that just is, a, is so wonderful when it happens is sometimes I'm cycling along. Um, sometimes I'm running along on a bike path, picking up trash. And there's this bike that comes towards me and it's got a kid on the front and it's got a parent on, on cycling. Uh, and the kid will go, blogger, blogger, blogger. And the parents are going, a what? Vlogger? No, no, a blogger. And then they explain to their parents what a blogger is. That's just, <laughs> I just have a huge grin when it happens. You kind of see this seven, eight-year-old is, or this, this young kid is teaching their parents about the word. I think that's fantastic. If only they could teach Google, because seriously, blogging is becoming a unifying word around the, around the world. Why does autocorrect on Google still try and correct it every time I do blogging and put it into plugging or plowing? Why, Google? Why? Why do you do that to me? Seriously, I have so many typos on my Instagram account. And it says, oh, yeah, I went plowing today and I picked up or, I, yeah, I really did a great plug. Mm, come on, Google. You should know by now. I thought we have all of these targeted ads and AI and everything. How does it not know that I use the word plug so often each day? I've never used the word plow. Why are you choosing that? <sighs> Ridiculous. Come on, Google. You can do better than this. So, blogging has become a worldwide phenomenon. So, make sure every time you go outside and you pick up some trash, you need to use it. Let's make the most of it. Let's use that power. It's so important. One of the things I want to do each week is let's talk about the trash I've collected in the previous week. So just to explain the reason why is I want to be so transparent in my life as a professional blogger. So I'm doing this full time now. I need to get sponsors. So if you're a brand and you want to sponsor me, just drop me an email. But I need sponsors and I need to prove to those sponsors. I need to prove to you as well that I do pick up as much trash as I do and I do run as much as I do. So I say I run 4,000 kilometers a year. I say I pick up 40,000 liters a year. How can I prove that? Well, what I do is I use Strava as being my driver in terms of everything. Every time I run, it's on Strava. Anything I put on Strava, I will pick up trash. So there's always at least one picture of trash that I've picked up on Strava and there you can see exactly the distances that I've run and I also use the clean something for nothing app so you can get that available in in, in Google or, or Apple and it's a fantastic app super simple all you do is just type in where you were you, know, you can put pinpoint on a map and and say how many bags of trash you got and so for me that's perfect because I just want to know how many liters so I just count the number of bags I've picked up and I know how many liters I've got and I just do it that way so I hold myself accountable on the Clean Something for Nothing app in terms of volumes of trash. 
and also on Strava in terms of running. So what did I do this last week? Well, um, so last week I mentioned I had a bit of a cold and I'm sort of getting towards the end of that. So I didn't quite get the, the normal distance I wanted. So I only managed to get 68 kilometers of running in. Normally I want to be sort of maybe 10, 20 kilometers more than that a week, but not bad considering uh, I'm so busy as well in terms of setting up uh, everything. I'm my one man band now. So if I don't do it, then it's just not getting done. So I've got to do my website and everything like that. So all of that made an impact, but 68 is okay. Should go up this week to something more decent and we'll see that moving forward. But in terms of liters of trash, I've got sort of 650 liters of trash. So that's, you know, that's right on target of what I need to do. So that was good. There were some nice big, big finds as well, as well as a couple of runs where it's just a handful. So no rules for plugging. It's up to you. Don't feel you have to have a bag of trash. It can be just a handful and that's enough. You've made an impact. And that's exactly what I do. If I want to focus on the run, I would just pick up a handful of trash. I can always pick up more the next time for me as a, as a professional plugger. <laughs> so that wasn't a bad week, but uh, I really want to sort of get those figures up next time. I kind of want to be in a lot more than that, but let's uh, see if that happens this week. The other thing I want to talk about is sort of the crazy finds. So I was running near in an area where I don't normally go very often. And, and I was just spotted in this bushes, this bottle of vodka and a load of Red Bull cans. And I thought, oh, all right, I'll get grab those. And it's so often the case. If you find a piece of trash, you'll find more there. Sometimes I'm running and I think, oh, there's a little piece of trash, literally just a fragment of a piece of trash. And I think, oh, I won't bother with that. I'll just do the big stuff, but I kind of, I don't know what it is. I just say, oh, I will get it. I will get it. And when I bend, bend down and get it, suddenly I notice that all around it, just a little bit further that I missed is a whole heap of other trash. And that's exactly what happened here. So I saw the bottle of vodka, but when I was actually reaching in to get it, I noticed that next to it, there was a load of other trash. Looked a bit further and went into the bushes a bit further. And there was this glass pipe. It was about a metre long and about 15 centimetres in diameter. Completely unscratched or anything. I have no idea. It wasn't a bong. Don't think it was a bong, even though I live in the Netherlands. So it wasn't a bong. It was just a glass pipe. I just have no idea why. What was the purpose of it? Just bizarre. I thought that, oh, that's it. That's going to be the, the winner for the most unusual piece of trash job done but then what I did was a little bit later on I was at the traffic lights and and I saw this red thing just on the grass if you see a red piece of plastic or something like that you think it's a doggy bag but it wasn't in the right place for a doggy bag I was like what, what is it so I went up to it and it was this glove this sort of arm length silk glove bizarre I thought, oh, that's just perfect. That's one of those keepers. Sometimes you find something, you just know, oh, I'm keeping that. That's not going in the bin. I can do something with that. And I was just, ah, oh, it's just a shame there's just one. If I'd found the other one, it would have been perfect. I look up and there, 10 metres further, there was the other one. So I got two brand new silk arm length gloves that are just so fantastic and I've actually used them already in a movie poster so once a week I make these movie posters I recreate a movie poster and give them a bit of a twist so I've already done that this one for this uh, for this week I've used those red gloves I'm sure I'll be using them again so if you've got any ideas for for movie posters that have got a red glove in them let me know and I can maybe remake it so that was definitely the weirdest piece of trash I've found sometimes you find fancy dress and you think especially around Halloween you can find some sort of weird items let's see what happens with Halloween this year so that was the weirdest piece of trash definitely and I think that's about it really I think I want to just end the episode there hope you've enjoyed it hope it's uh sound a little bit better than it did last week trying to reduce the number of breathing <sighs> a lot of those just trying to catch my breath. I've tried to adjust the settings. Does it sound better than last week? Let me know below. 
you got any things you want me to talk about, let me know below. And if you can, I'd love it if you gave a rating or if you just gave a little thumbs up or rating, whatever, whichever environment you're in, just so that uh, it shows up. Just be honest. Don't feel they have to give it five stars. Please do five stars. No, so just give it however many stars you think it deserves. It's not meant to be a professional podcast. It's not meant to be the best podcast in the world. It's there for me to craft my skills as a podcaster. So it's going to be a lot of fumbling, a lot of umming and ahhing, and a lot of hesitations and just going all over the shop. But hopefully, if you listen in each week, it'll get better and better. So please subscribe. And then each week I'll be dropping a new one. Let's see if it gets better and better. So my name is Paul. I'm a professional blogger. I pick up trash on my daily runs as a living. This is my way of life. Hopefully some of this has inspired you to incorporate into your way of life. Don't be as crazy as me. Just one piece. That's all you need to do. More importantly, get seen when you do it. Be seen. Make the impact. Thank you for listening. Speak to you next week.